Welcome back to the show. He is an internationally acclaimed baseball coach. He is also the co-author of a brand new book called Team Chemistry. I'm joined by Andre Lachance. Andre, welcome to the show. Great to have you here. Um, and and what a, an amazing career you've had. You've you've changed roles. You're ba you're you're in a new role now. But um, tell us a little bit about your your history with with Baseball Canada. Well, I've been with uh, with Baseball Canada for 20 years. Uh, started as an operation manager and then ended up uh, being the head coach of the women's national team and that lasted for a good 15 years. So I went to eight world championship Pan Am Games in Toronto in 2015 and brought the team to a second world ranking, which we were really proud. Always no proud kidding. to be in front of our friends Americans <laughs> and um, all of those uh, Latinos countries as well. So uh, it's, it's been a great journey. Yeah, it, it's been an amazing ride and, and rise of, of the program itself, in particular the, the women's program. But you decided to, to change roles. Tell us about uh, the decision to change roles and where you're at now. Yeah, I'm now the uh, director of uh, human performance with uh, Cirque du Soleil, which is uh, located in Montreal, our headquarters are in Montreal. So uh, uh, now overseeing the work of uh, all the artistic coaches, the uh, acrobatic coaches, mental performance. Uh, physical preparation, nutrition, and all those services that are around um, uh, our artists that are performing uh, every day for for the public. So it's really uh, it remains performance, you know, as as we as we know, like people don't forget sometimes that some of our artists they're performing over 100, 450 times a year. So can you imagine? Yeah, that's unbelievable. Well, I mentioned off the top, you co-authored a, a brand new book called Team Chemistry. I imagine a lot of that is probably through your experience through base. Baseball Canada and, and managing that that national team. Uh, where did the inspiration come for the book? Well, myself and my co-author was a former student of mine at the uh, University of Ottawa, which where I've been teaching for the last 20 years. So we've always um, thought about the idea of writing a book about how we build um, good cohesion in, in a team environment. You know, we always hear about uh, team chemistry when, when we discuss success or failure. Uh, of teams, and that idea came from um, from that saying that we, you know, we need more team chemistry, or we don't have enough team chemistry. So basically, we took the good old table of, of elements that we all know from chemistry, and we changed those elements for key elements for having success in in a team environment. And it could be a sports team. But you can also relate to the, the, these elements in, in the workplace as well. One of the things you discuss in the book, Andre, is you know how to effectively learn from wins, and I, which I think is very interesting because we often talk about the opposite: is how to effectively learn from from losses. Um, t tell me about you know that deci decision to, to speak on that topic, and, and and maybe some advice for people out there. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you need you need to learn how to win. You know, like especially in a in a team sport environment, uh, there are good behaviors associated with winning. Uh, and and as coaches, I think sometimes we put too much emphasis on how to handle failure or losing. Right. But sometimes um, managing uh, winning. Uh, is a good reflection about what type of leader you are, what type of coach, culture you've built over time with your team as well. Uh, and, and, and to us, it is important to stress that importance when, when, um, when developing like uh, key principles, uh, key DNA for your team or key culture um, in order to reach those uh, the, the, those uh, performance that you're, that you're seeking uh, during, during the course of the year. So, we just see it as being as, as important as, as dealing with failure. Uh, would you mind reaching out to my Ottawa Senators? No, I'm kidding. Uh, I want to talk about another thing that, that you, you, you discuss in the book, and, and that is sort of, you know, those the distractions and disruptions of, of social media, and especially, you know, young athletes. Uh, I know they follow a lot of social media, but it, I imagine it can be harmful. Yeah, and, and as many people probably don't know, there's there's a unique link between being exposed to uh, your phone, not only social media, but your phone, your iPad, your computer, and the effect it has on, on sleep. So right. at the end of the day, we're talking about performance, and then if you're always uh, looking at your camera before you... Uh, 
going to bed, a recommendation right now we have is that an hour before going to bed, you should shut down everything, which I think is really, really difficult for some, some of us, uh, including myself. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, like we, we propose in the book some strategies um, for coaches to use in order to minimize the impact on social media and, and how to, uh, I would say, behave properly on social media, not only yeah. about the brand, uh, your, your, your footprint that you're going to leave on, on social media, but how are you going to deal also with, uh, with other people around you? Because we always forget that there's other people sometimes around you, and sometimes you don't get permission or whatsoever. So the book is giving you those, uh, th those guidelines and those key principles to, uh, to, to respect. And I imagine the book is available everywhere. I've just got 10 seconds left here, so I just want to make sure you know, Amazon uh, chapters uh, available all over the place. Andre, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Don't go away. We'll introduce you to a fantastic local band that has teamed up with Carol Pope. Coming up after this.